Good morning, it's Jonathan Barrett with the War Report. That's the week ahead report, and it's uh, the 2nd of August. Uh, the current time is uh, just coming on at 8 o'clock. Okay, um, last week closed uh, in a very eventful week, uh, closed in a very eventful week, particularly for the grain prices. Uh, we saw grain, uh, particularly wheat, uh, had its uh, month, largest monthly gain since 1973. In addition to that, we saw some very firm prices in rice, which is something we've been looking at for some time, and uh, also the corn and the soybean plant complex uh, also traded quite nicely. Um, last week also saw a, sort of renewed concerns, particularly from the Fed Governor Bernanke, um, and we've also seen um, um, some more comments, particularly uh, more comments concerning the state of the nation uh, in terms of the US, in terms of its economic recovery. Uh, Bernanke is certainly not as confident and uh, nor as optimistic as a lot of people, um, and uh, I think people are also concerned that um, uh, something which we've a theme which we've had for some time is whether or not the um, quarterly earnings reports, uh, the profits are as a result of the stimulus or as a result of the economy's moving ahead. Uh, so it's going to be quite interesting this week uh, because we do have a raft of data, a raft of data coming out, uh, culminating in the unemployment data in um, in the US on Friday. So uh, we should sort of uh, see what's actually occurring there. Um, and during the week we should get some good indication as to how strong or how lacklustre the US economy actually is. So uh, we'll move from there. But let's, uh, let's get our minds in the, in the mood for another week and uh, let's have, just have a very, very quick summary. Then we'll talk about uh, some of the markets, some of the themes and, uh, of course, the data out this week. Okay, one of the most important things coming up, the Chinese manufacturing grows at its slowest pace in 17 months. This is going to send a little bit of a shiver through the market in terms of its, uh, the optimism we actually had. China is obviously meant to be the, um, the engine room of the world. Um, although this is, uh, is certainly controlled, and we believe it is certainly controlled, uh, obviously, in China, and they've done a good job of doing it, we do feel that that sentiment uh, will actually portray itself in some of these equity markets. So that is a little bit of concern. Um, look at the two guys here, Greenspan, Bernanke all basically not as positive and obviously they know something that we don't and as a result of that as a result of that uh, we're seeing things certainly come under pressure or may see things certainly come under pressure so uh, let's stay close to that let's just have a quick look at uh, some of the markets we follow um, and uh, you can see some of the movements where we've actually had as well have been uh, quite uh, quite uh, quite positive and uh, let's just have a quick look here let's just get um, to some charts and uh, let's just put a little chart in here uh, tools, charts, there we go, whoops, charts down the bottom there, okay, that's cool. Okay, uh, let's look at the daily charts, I think that's probably the key, dollar index is obviously key. Um, the trend uh, on the dollar index is uh, obviously dollar lower as you can see, um, I was looking for a little bit of support, it seems to around this area, it seems to have broken right through, uh, so um, not until we, we start to see um, concerns reignite in the US will the dollar actually uh, trade higher, um, and uh, that might be sooner than we actually think, but uh, at the moment, the trend is still down until we see a break back through 82.30, so keep an eye on that. Um, have a look at the little Aussie battler here, 90.61, obviously on the back of the week. These are the key areas up here. Takes out that area on the top side, uh, then um, yeah, 90.70, uh, 91, then uh, went to a new and higher range up to 92. So uh, a little bit of volatility there. Remember tomorrow we've got RBA in terms of their announcements. Uh, the euro continues to trade well. And uh, obviously expectations there on a bust through that old high, that dollar will continue to weaken quite dramatically. Um, having a look at uh, gold and their crude, then copper. Uh, gold are uh, doing very well, um, very well indeed. And, and we're going to get a little bit of a spin in terms of inflation, I think, uh, un unanticipated inflation, particularly from the soft market, coming from that, that area. And uh, that, I think, will help gold up. Um, so everyone knows... Um, we have a stop to add to short position or to, to stop out of old long and go short at 11.58, okay? But at the moment, I think this low is in place and uh, I would probably think that uh, we can start to move higher from these levels. Okay, um, just purely with what's happening and uh, I think you can see that little trend line there which we can follow and if I can just draw it in here, you'd be able to see exactly what I mean. Let's try and get that trend line. There we are. So break through that area there, I think you could probably comfortably say I'm going to go long gold. Um, I think that's that's the right play to go, uh, right play to be in at the moment. Okay, um, so we've mentioned that. Let's have a quick look at the crude market. Crude market in itself, 78.89. It is holding up dramatically well. There's no doubt about it um, when you'd expect the market to go down. We do have the currency review, sorry, the oil review coming out. 
uh, probably later today, and uh, it'll give us a few indications as to why we think the market is holding up quite nicely. But just so everyone knows, a breakthrough 80.25, do run with it, because we feel it looks uh, quite good from there. Copper looks okay as well. Um, as you can see, uh, still the headwinds remain pretty positive for it, so uh, higher highs every day, so that's still encouraging. On the local market, uh, 4,471 is where we're trading. Um, it's going to be a little bit tough, I think, here, uh, but uh, be wary of uh, the low last night, last Friday. Um, if we take out that low, then um, you know I am a bit concerned. Okay, So just keep that in the back of your mind. A break through that low on the downside, um, we will see the market lower. Okay. Uh, that's around that 4,420 4, area, so uh, keep an eye on that. Now, um, just a quick thing, um, of the markets of note which we're in, and everyone knows we are long grains, rough rice, just have a look at this chart, you're going to love it. Um, it broke out for the first time um, in such a long time. I had a 4 5% move last night, and uh, let's try and draw some, a few little trend lines in there. Um, why can't I draw the trend line in? Okay, there we go. Um, getting close to right on uh, resistance now, but a break of that is significant, um, and um, we actually enjoy it if that if that occurs. It puts this whole correction phase and the movement back through to that 12 uh, cannot be ruled out. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, we like it, and uh, certainly like it on a break through that 10.62, probably to add two positions. We've got warrants there, and they're looking quite healthy. Uh, looking at the wheat markets, very strong indeed, very strong. Um, more, more actually be more concerned, I guess, because we've got weather concerns there. Back at home, we've also got weather, weather concerns. Um, it's anticipated that we might lose 30% of our crop out of the West, and uh, that'll ser certainly highlight uh, certainly a strong basis towards the local markets. Uh, looks like the East might actually hopefully drag things through there, but that's only going to add to the fury that the markets are a little bit concerned out there in terms of supply. Remember, Australia is about the third largest wheat exporter and doubling that up with the Ukraine looking to cancel a lot of its uh, wheat exports, um, it certainly tends a little bit of a negative picture or a positive picture for the price. Okay, um, now that's uh, looking at that. Let's have a look at um, what's actually happening out there in terms of the economic numbers. And, um, and I think if anything here, uh, Monday um, we've got some PPI data there, which I think is quite good. A little bit of data in the States there, but uh, lots of PPI data, particularly um, uh, Particularly, where are we? Yeah, particularly PPI in Oz, new home sales as well, which I think will be quite quite good. So we'll have to see what happens on that front. Um, going through the week, Tuesday, uh, we've got some consumer confidence data in the states. Uh, that's sort of going to add to the weight in terms of how we feel the market will actually trade. Um, and I think that's just another added point as to what's going to happen. Retail sales in Australia, and we've got the RBA cash rate, which will be very important. So um, keep very close to that. Uh, because I think that, that in itself, um, we've got to keep a close eye on personal income in Australia and uh, APA normal data there. Um, now, looking forward on a Wednesday, um, Wednesday, Wednesday we haven't got, um, I guess, PMI coming out, quite a lot of that. Um, a lot of data out of the US again, so it's going to be quite important. And uh, Wednesday, once again, um, you've got a whole raft of data coming out, uh, particularly um, in America. And uh, I think of those there, uh, it'll be the lead into the big numbers which come out on Friday night, uh, which are the unemployment in the States. So um, they're the main ones there, which is something we've really got to look at. So uh, unemployment there is expected to be a little bit better, but um, given Bernanke's comments, um, perhaps it's not going to be as good as what we um, anticipated. So that could be quite interesting. Um, so that's about it really on that front. But a lot of data out here this week will give us some good lead as to what we feel um, will occur um, for the US economy. And there is this call that says that um, Europe, America could come off a little bit, come off the boil. Um, Europe as well, but Asia we think could be quite strong. Uh, keep an eye on the trend for the US dollar. Uh, remember, we, we are long gold. Um, we're long gold. We are long the grains. Um, we're certainly long rice at the moment. Uh, so there's some good opportunities there. I don't think anyone's missed the boat on rice, so keep an eye on that one. I think that's going to be quite positive. Okay, that's it for the week ahead report. I hope everyone has a good week and uh, we'll certainly talk to you uh, next week. Cheers, bye.